Good morning. morning. We are here in Florence. Yesterday was a big travel day where we took the train from Sorrento to Naples and then got a Flix bus all the way from Naples to Florence via Rome. So with that, then we didn't go. We arrived in Florence at about 11.45 p.m., but fortunately the hotel we booked was maybe a seven minute walk away from the bus station. However, when we arrived, we couldn't get in. There was no one here to open the door. Now, a few days earlier, I had had a communication from the hotel saying that check-in was until 8 p.m. Obviously, when we booked this hotel, we weren't aware of that because we actually tried to be very careful to ensure that we booked hotels that had check-in open until midnight if we needed it. While we were on the bus, I received an email from the hotel saying that someone would be here to check us in and that we could send them our documents early so that they could register us with the city. However, obviously on arrival, no one was here and we were pressing the buzzer button and no one was answering. So we then proceeded to phone the contact number and we received a text back from someone who only spoke Italian and he said that he was only in charge with registering us with the city, not letting us in. He gave us the contact information of the person in charge of the hotel. We phoned him, there was no answer. We texted him and there was no answer. So at this point, I thought we need to start looking for another hotel or hostel or Airbnb. But of course, at this point, it's already 1215 at night. Fortunately, you found something across the street and we walked over, checked it out, but it seemed that it was a similar situation to this where it was more of like an Airbnb type situation as opposed to a hotel with a reception. And upon looking further, it seemed like those were the only types of hotels, B&Bs, whatever you wanna call it, in this vicinity. Then I had the bright idea that Nick should hotspot me because I have no Wi-Fi and see if there was an additional message from the hotel. It turns out there was, and he had said, even though we would be here after 8 p.m. and checkout was closed, we could let ourselves in, and he had given us the code to the door. So we walked back across the street, very relieved, hoping that the codes would work. However, the relief was pretty short-lived. We tried the two different codes that the person had provided to us. Neither of them were working. We tried all sorts of different combinations on the keypad to try and see if what they provided would work for us and they didn't. So there we were talking to the person in charge of the reservations because they were the only person available at the time to try and see what we could do. As mentioned, they didn't speak English, so they were only messaging us in Italian. So there I was having to Google translate literally everything that I wanted to say and translate everything back from what they gave us. But eventually they provided us with a note that apparently they'd sent amongst themselves, but it definitely wasn't the information that we had received from them. I never received that information on our Expedia booking and the codes that they sent to Nick at 12.30, 12.45 at night were different from the ones they had emailed me earlier, but fortunately they worked and we were able to get in it was probably about one o'clock by the time we actually got into the place. But even then, we still didn't quite know our room number. So we ended up knocking on a couple of wrong doors, which was really awkward. But eventually we did find the room with a key in it. And we probably got to bed about two o'clock in the morning, didn't we? Yeah, even the room number that he provided me in the email earlier in the day was incorrect. Whereas the email that we got from the man Nick was texting with the correct codes, that note had the correct room number in it. So I don't know why we had different information than they had internally. Either way, it ended up working out and we got to sleep and now we're here in Florence. Yeah, we have a limited time in Florence as we're moving on to Pisa this evening. However, we have a walking tour booked as well as a visit to the Academia to see the David as well as other artworks. So with that, let's crack on.
just finished our free walking tour and our guide Fabio was amazing. He was so full of historical knowledge and it would just be absolutely impossible to recount it all. But the biggest takeaway for me is that if you are interested in the Medici family or Renaissance art and architecture, then Florence is the city for you. Yeah, I think um, definitely one of the distinguishing features between this and Rome is Rome is obviously more focused on the ancient city, whereas this is more dealing with uh, medieval and Renaissance times. And honestly, it's fascinating, and this place is just beautiful, even when it's raining. So now we are a bit hungry. It is lunchtime, um, and we took a quick look on TripAdvisor to get a sense of the best pizza to get. So we are at the Gustadium, and um, yeah, gonna give it a try. All of this for 15 euros. I have no idea what I'm trying because he told us so long ago what was on the pizza, but here goes nothing. After an amazing lunch, we have made our way back to San Lorenzo Church, where several members of the Medici family are buried. Our tour guide said that it's really beautiful inside, so we're going to go have a look now. To San Lorenzo Church because it's so different from all the other cathedrals we've seen so far. This one is very simple in comparison to all the others which I found to be so ornate so that difference really made it interesting. Also 
I don't love art galleries, but this is a place where you can come and see a bunch of famous works from Michelangelo and Donatello, which I thought was really interesting. And it's also the perfect place to see Renaissance architecture and art. So in my mind, it's a treasure trove. The simplicity of the inside, the fact that it is not as ornate, does actually mean that what is there is really accentuated. So you get a real appreciation for all of the work that you're able to see while you're in there, which is huge. I found it really interesting because, well, the main kind of theme of the day as we've been finding out more information has been all about the Medici family and their influence, their wealth, their power. And it's kind of incredible because in the basement you have a museum which is which has a room dedicated entirely to all of the relics that they kept. Those they acquired through payment and through exchanging gold. So clearly they had so much money in order to actually be able to get their hands on these things in the first place. And it's pretty astounding really. It was another part to it is that actually for kind of anything such as their power, they could just commission people and just say, okay, uh, we need you to do this now, and they just do it. It was really that simple. Including Michelangelo and Donatello. Exactly. I think it's because of the fact that these people were running Florence, that this entire family were kind of the major leaders of Florence for such a time that essentially it was such a huge honor, kind of in the same way as being commissioned by the likes of the Pope and things like that, really. And it was very much up there. They have so many palaces scattered across Florence that you could go and visit, but this was definitely worth the nine euro entrance ticket and it was a really great escape from the rain. Absolutely. So if you have a spare hour or two to kick around Florence, then give this a try. Cup of coffee. Great job, everybody. After a quick stop for an espresso, we have arrived at the Chiavina. Did I say that right? Thank you. That's right. Italians, Italians can correct me the way. We're super excited to see the David, as well as the other artworks, but we're not going to be able to film inside. The best thing about that was that they have changed the rules and you can now take pictures and film as long as you have no flash photography, which means I forever have a memory of the day. It was extremely impressive. Um, it's something that everybody talks about that you have to see when you come to Florence. And I get it. It's considering the fact that it took Colangelo three years, four years? to actually make then you can see the level of detail to which you went like to the point where you can even see like fates you can see bones coming through the hands and all of that kind of stuff like it really is well i mean for one of a better word it's truly a work of art very very impressive and one could argue that that is worth the 12 euro admission in itself otherwise though the rest of the gallery, I don't know about you, but it felt like there was a bit left to be desired. It was all a lot of Renaissance art, which if you're into that, that's wonderful, but it's not really our bag. After a while, you kind of get a bit Renaissance out. Same with the fact that it's a lot of religious art. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that it's the same few stories that are told over and over again in the same style with gold leaf and the same colors. So it gets very samey and again, if you know those stories, then probably you would be more impressed than we are. Yep, and equally, if you're somebody who's really into your art or art history, then definitely you would get way more out of it than we would. 
but all the same though, um, still a really nice way to spend an hour. So um, yeah, all in all. And 100% worth it just for the David, to yes. stress that alone. Even if you're not into art, the David is 100% worth seeing. Completely agree. Now, a few days earlier, I had had a communication from the hotel saying that checkout, no. So we then proceeded to phone the number. So we then proceeded. So we have just. After our, 